Hey Soul Tribe, welcome to your Divine Guidance Reading, where we are spiritual as fuck. If we haven't met yet, my name is High Priestess Barry, Psychic Medium and Divine Channeler, hoping to bring you a message. Now, always remember, my messages are candid, improvised, but they're also timeless. So please remember, listen to your instincts, tap into your intuition. If there's anything that I talk about that doesn't make any sense, totally fine. Do not worry about it. This message may not be for you, but you're always welcome to stick around and enjoy the show. So, like, today's message... Uh, it's, it's weird. It's going to feel like a repeat episode of everything that we've been talking about this week. And I was going back and forth. What's like, well, if it's a repeat message, is it worth repeating? And the universe is like, yes. Um, partly because when we're talking about getting out of a situation, healing from something, moving on to a, a new lifestyle, the, the new me, um, there's so many different facets in the way that we uh, have interacted with people in the past, the way that we wish to interact with people in the future. So there's something to be said about this, you know, repeat soap opera episode or repeat events, because you're actually working with a multitude of different people who have different energies. So there's something about the way that the readings have been coming out as of late to sort of give you multiple different perspectives, either on the same situation or at least giving you different um, angles of, you know, we'll say angles of attack because it sounds a little bit fun and enabling that way. But the way that you're able to look at different people and understand the unique nature of their energy, because whatever we want to talk about today, like I do have a nine of pentacles and, you know, this is a little bit of this sleepy energy and partly because you've been so invested in everybody else's bullshit, trying to be everybody's mother, you know, got a little mother bear energy or trying to be the, you know, the father figure, you know, that your, your, uh, friends might need, like you've been trying to put on a mask, trying to put on a show for everybody else. And now that you've been getting better at withdrawing your energy, not as <laughs> readily <laughs> willing to just jump into bed, <laughs> literally or figuratively <laughs> with uh, some of these energies. And I, I do make a bit of the, the more sexual quip because um, I have been guided to bring out the erotic tarot. But that said, this may not necessarily be a romantic relationship, but there's something very unique about these, the sexual attraction. And we need to bring that up specifically because with the, but whether if it is a uh, subconscious wound that we have with our parents and not even through harm, some of you have been harmed by your parents and other adults, whether it be, you know, sexually, mentally, emotionally, or physically. But there's also understanding that some of our um, attraction energies have been intertwined with our parents, you know, whether if that is, you know, the, the defiant daughter who goes against everything her father says and has like, you know, a nasty habit of being attracted to the bad boy. Guilty! Or if, you know, somebody else where they have only associated motherly energy with love, but have intermixed love and sex, that becomes very emotionally confusing to people as well. We do have King of Wands. And well, I get the sense that, you know, the universe has been using animal guides. Many of you have been talking about seeing ravens and crows a lot on your own walks. And in a lot of ways, this is the divine just reminding you of their presence to let you know that you do have a lot of governship on how it is you wish to operate in the world. But given that I'm seeing that with this snoozle bear, you know, just kind of, it's so funny. I get such a four of swords energy off this card but this is more like so this is what it's like to relax in my own comfort so this is what it's like to relax in my own energy and it's like you know divine has come down with a curl it's like ding and it's giving you a little bit of this battery boost because it you know the last couple of readings you know i did get a little of this you know bump energy where you know whether if it's looking for a substance trying to get back into a habit to rocket ship you people coming back into your energy with the 
stuff that they use that they're accustomed to you know boosting your spirits with and it doesn't have to be a, an actual substance but it, it's just funnier to you know use that as the um as the go-to because I use the word substance very loosely and so I think you guys have a pretty good idea what I mean by that but this is really taking ownership I was mentioning yesterday that you know I got angry you know because my dog tried to eat something off of the ground and I had to take ownership of that anger well this isn't like an animal or pardon me, this is more of an animal king of wands typically that left hand and a lot of um, depictions of the king of wands is like it's balled up fist of anger like Part of the reason, if any of you are dealing with this sudden degree of extreme emotion, first of all, that's actually kind of normal. If you're noticing this, it's very important to stay in touch, especially with your mental health care providers, because you're physically emoting some trapped energy, but it's going to be important to remember take ownership for that anger don't take it out on other people or other things or even on your pets or children there's something that you need to feel specifically but it's designed to help you come into your own power nine of wands talk about power being able to power through obstacles and in many ways i'm seeing you more like this porcupine trying to fend off this fox and thankfully this little fox is way too curious with your ingenuity it doesn't even realize that there's totally a space that it can come through there's something about you being able to manufacture your own boundaries coming up with your own unique way of first of all <laughs> consulting with yourself to ensure you know i have that good internal conversation with the almighty me but also being able to feel comfortable putting up those boundaries knowing that you got some persistent energies around you these are the these are like the family members that continue want to be involved with your business because they're fucking needy about one thing or another. This could also be a past lover cropping up or even just it could be a different person, but they have the same energy as of that past lover where, you know, you're in an energy that's being um, you're, you're in this energy that's allowing you to see things just exactly how they are, allowing you to see things and people for who they actually just how they behave and not feeling apologetic for their behavior. Because, you know, you have learned how to take some ownership and you're still working on those on building those boundaries. So in some ways, these people, these situations that are cropping back up is to let you know, hey, you got a bit of a knowledge gap right here because we do have the higher font and this is about you being transmuted into a teacher there's something about the way that you're learning how to overcome your addictions overcoming um survival energy overcoming past life karma being able to welcome in healthy relationships and feel better about dismissing energies that are you know less than like you're able you're you're in this really neat position to story tell. I know I have writers on this channel and many of you are dying to tell a story, the story, my story. And this is actually part of your journey. And right now, like you're, you're being told, like you're in the middle of some really good content and not to be too caught up with what's going on in your immediate surroundings, because good stories, uh, a story is easy when someone else has written it for you because whether the ending is good or not there is someone who's gone out of the way to write the end of the story but you're now on the forefront you're you're ahead of the curb with a lot of people there's a reason why you can't necessarily find people that resonate with what it is that you're talking about it's because you're the early adopter of some profound change that's going to be going on in your reality this is so cool so in my pre-shuffle just to get a bit of an idea of what spirit wanted to talk about the hierophant the five of swords what else showed up and the nine of cups it's so funny and it it came back out in the opposite order sort of as though you've been able to see it one way but now there's something about a reversal so you can see it from another angle there's our page of cups holy shit this is at the bottom of the deck in my pre-shuffle is justice here 
Justice is here. Fuck yeah. And this is a way of just exercising a fair and balanced way of like when you are approached, like, you know, some of you are just like a bunch of consummate hotties. So there's going to be a bit of a shift and some of you might be a little bit nervous. It's like, I worked very hard to make sure that I'm not a hottie. I just want to be the hottie, but I don't want to attract people for which, you know, I, I hear you. I understand the call, but this is also you coming around and having a chance to actually exercise true love, true unconditional love, where you're no longer bound to, um, you know, an idea of how somebody might have hurt you in the past. Um, there's something about this situation, this person that either they're going to be cropping up in your energy, they're going to kind of loop back. You know, this could be someone who like, you know, you, you went out with a while ago and they, they wanted to, you know, try round two and you're like, I don't know what to do with you because I know exactly how this is going to end. There's some healing in this energy that you're being asked to have a gentle look at. When I wanted to ask Spirit for a bit of a subject heading to figure out what they wanted to talk about today, I've been very drawn towards animal energy, that primal, feral aspect of ourselves where we react, but we don't always understand our physical reactions and we may inadvertently over-rationalize our thoughts. But at the base of the deck, I do have Lion Spirit and this is where, oh my gosh, <laughs> I was going to say, this is where the mama bear energy is coming in, but I love, and I, I didn't even see this earlier, we have armadillo spirit, set healthy boundaries. Like, this is just recognizing that in the past, you softened those boundaries because you felt bad for someone. Maybe they were kind of cute. Maybe they actually did have uh, something about their curriculum vitae, their resume that made you go, okay, well, this seems like a very successful person. Like, you know, they keep themselves well-dressed or, you know, they have this like education or they have this this appearance as though they might have their shit together and you know the more you know you get to know them it's like oh wow you have a lot of things going on that I don't want to deal with it's this sort of feeling where you know you're no longer judgmental it's like what's their problem they seem so successful they keep acting like they're so fucking successful how come they, they can't get their shit together it's getting out of this energy because this judgmental energy is kind of what got us all into these karmic relationships in the first place judgment is an attraction energy and the more we're judgmental towards somebody else like what the fuck is their problem we magnetize that energy into our life because the universe listened to you the universe said oh i'll show you exactly why they're going through that and then you wonder why the fuck you got into the situation in the first place so sandpiper spirit did fly straight out as i was doing the shuffle and i was a little bit amused like i was annoyed and just really ungrounded earlier today because um the emergency warning system came in for our area to say you know magnitude earthquake whatever has been detected drop and take cover and i'm like I've never seen an earthquake warning before. Usually it happens before anyone else has a chance to really speak about it. So like, it's one of these things where this realization, we're like, oh shit, there's an earthquake? I don't feel anything. I don't hear anything. Like, whenever you hear an earthquake, it feels like and sounds like this freight train is coming like directly towards your house. And, um, like there was nothing and I was a little bit freaked out I'm like oh no like we all are after like you know an emergency um after an emergency alert goes goes out like I was painting and then I dropped my my paintbrush into my coffee and I was like ah fuck like and then nothing really happened. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you know, I started Googling it, trying to figure out where this was. And it wasn't too far away. It was a 4.6 magnitude. So I was kind of surprised I didn't feel anything. But there's something about, like, suddenly feeling really ungrounded. Like, this thing comes back to you. And it's like, oh, my God. Like, it's very difficult to feel as though I can be rooted on the ground. It's like the sandpiper is like, you know, it's like, ha, 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 ha. I've been picking up a little bit of hot potato energy. So there's something about having to work with these unexpected blips, these unexpected repeat episode, because we do have B spirit here, which does say sweet results await, which, you know, I'm again triggered by, you know, this insect. And we were having this conversation the other day about what's the difference between an energy of a bee and versus a wasp. And I've been having so many wasp energies, along with spiders. Like I'm seeing some big fire 
fuckers just hanging around and I have a deal with the universe. I'm like, look, if you want to send me signs and synchronicities with insects, just know if you want to send me a sign inside my home, I will obliterate any insect that enters my home. I have a thing. So I gave the universe a few rules. I will think the insect for its service, but if it's not easy for me to get it out, I will kill it. Like, <laughs> this is sort of like my little deal with the universe. I don't want to, but I will if I have to. Like, this is me trying to come up with some semblance of boundaries. Like, and we, we, we got along quite well. Like, when I got back from my vacation, I'd opened up my patio, and inside my apartment, I suddenly see this big fucking spider. And I was like, okay, Spidey, thank you for your service, but out. Like, I sat there with the door open. I'm just pointing it outwards. I'm like, you're like, you, you, you've escaped the wrath of berries. Thank you. And you can tell, I was like, okay, cool. I'm on my way out. This is the thing that I am doing right now. But this is a little bit of an emphasis on the signs and synchronicities that you have been picking up. Whenever you see a series of animals and then it switches to a different series of animals, part of that is just the universe to let you know that you're on a different train, a different proverbial timeline. So there's something about different kind of insects that, especially the ones that are kind of getting into your space, that's actually a, a bit of a heads up from spirit because for me, dealing with wasp energy, sometimes wasp energy is um, a little bit of attention seeking energy, trying to really invade that my personal field. And it's also the way the universe is trying to let me know that I have other people who are psychically trying to get my attention. So far, I have not been stung and I can and I've decided, like, you know, again, I will not be stung as a form of sign from the universe. I have to be doing something really fucking stupid if that's what the universe wants to use to get my attention. So <laughs> I'm hearing preventative energetic maintenance. So the core reading today, oh, suddenly got very, very snivelly here. It's okay, my friend. We'll be all right. We'll get the we'll get together with this. <laughs> With the tarot decks, um, like I was mentioning, I wanted to bring out the erotic tarot, and um, I did find it fascinating. We do have seven of feathers underneath. Like, this is just deception, not what you signed up for. Like, talking a little bit about, you know, whether if you have somebody coming into your energy and, you know, they, they see your hot deliciousness and a part of you is just sort of like, I am neither a snack, nor do I feel like snacking on somebody right now. <laughs> boundaries <laughs> but it partly because it's sort of like you just know that whatever energy this is it's just not going to be that appetizing and there's this piece of you where it's like i could say no like what do i do and give me a little bit of a freeze as well because underneath there we do have seven of roses and this is just timing things out and things working out in the right order things trying to auto bloom in the right you know, in the right sequence, like right now, the U.S. is dealing with a few issues when it comes to fruit cropping, where um, because of the nature of cl how climate has been shifting, my sister actually mentioned this as well with her apple tree back uh, back at home, where um, fruit has been um, starting way too soon within the season. And especially for those fl uh, flowering fruit trees, they've been blooming too soon in winter and winter going into spring where they actually die off in the first or second frost. Like apparently like uh, most of Georgia's peaches this year were completely destroyed due to two premature frost episodes. There's something about things have not been conducive to you budding and flowering and being able to produce your own fruit because the energetic climate has shifted so much. There's been an ask for, you know, to adapt, like, you know, like the Borg from Star Trek, you know, resistance is futile. But there's nothing for you to be worried about. We do have the fool at the base of the rainbow tarot deck, well, along with this king of swords. Like, it's just a frank conversation, if anything, just with yourself. Yeah, you're seeing this repeat episode because there's something very cool about this episode that, you know, a little discovery, an Easter egg, or a, a funny joke, something in there that made you go, oh God, I'm so glad I rewatched this. Like it, like, you know, I was a little bit worried at first, but now that I really see it for what it's worth, it, it's like, it's almost a sense of relief and, um, 
joy that comes from it where again you can start actually re-engaging with these energies again without the fear it actually becomes more like a thoughtful game not where you're playing games with people but it's as though you feel so comfortable playing the rules that it feels effortless and as long as things you're operating within your own rules this can actually come a little bit fun but wow after we go to cut we do the magician like and this is also just learning how to work with some toys quote unquote that you've been having hanging around your proverbial house because we do a four of wands right here there's something about all the adventures you've gone through all the stories that you have experienced uh, the the people you've walked away and those that you are continuing to you know duel like fence um energetically in your day-to-day -day life that's going to first of all bring in a lot of fucking justice where it says here balancing justice and compassion managing the fair distribution of power as opposed to offering only destructive criticism misusing business legal or criminal authority because below that we do the card of the beggar which says dependency on others to the exclusion of effort like you know some of this is a little bit of uh you know karma's a bitch and i was talking earlier about that judgmental attitude where we look at somebody else with almost anger and disdain of going what's wrong with you and again the when you have when you pour your actual energy into this thought where we're intermixing our manifestation energies with our thinky thoughts and almost our masked ego identities we're telling the universe I want to experience what they are experiencing because hate is the same energy as love hate is the same frequency as love if you have hate towards somebody anybody that's through your heart chakra and you're throwing a double dog dare to the universe out of your own anger because you're angry at somebody for being in an energy. This is you kind of recognizing how you got into the karmic pattern in the first place so that you can have more incentive to separate um, your thoughts from your heart. I was also mentioning earlier separating your heart from the sacral chakra, differentiating love versus sex, hate versus our thoughts and assumptions and also being entangled with toxic guides toxic energies and entities that just want to fuck with us and have no problem matchmaking us with someone in their same toxic frequency Woo! there it is because we do have the card of reflect this is also another one that flew out because below that connect a heart and this has been a very common card that i keep seeing coming out like you have been healing your heart chakra but the universe really wants you to understand how it is you got into this in the first place so that you don't re-injure your heart chakra again so after we go to cut you're being asked to trust like remember this reflection energy like attracts like if you're repeating an episode and you didn't do, and you know you didn't actively ask to repeat an episode you're being asked to trust that there's still something about this person about this situation about this interaction that you're still learning and gleaning from because this is about you coming into your own foundation the pillar is also for me internal union as well as divine union it's a very twin flamey energy and a lot of people in this channel like I love you like we're all kind of post twin flame we understand we got the counterpart and they're doing their fucking thing but also realizing that first of all I can't even deal with myself how the hell am I supposed to deal with that person and if they're like me it means they're equally as a clusterfuck as me so why the hell like a lot of you've been able to start letting go of whoever the counterpart is supposed to be and for others of you, the idea of a counterpart doesn't have to be that one person anymore. Just realizing that you always have somebody in front of you who is a shadow and being able to recognize the shadowy person. And again, not judging them, but being able to, first of all, speak to them. If they are seeking you out, you actually are able to tell them what it is they need to hear through story, parables. Nobody likes being told what to do. 
I don't like being told what to do. You really don't like being told what to do. Like all of us hail from this very variation of the energy of like, what? No, shut up. And oppositional defiance. When we storytell, it opens up the heart to be more receptive. The opposite of storytelling is legalism. I was mentioning wasp energy and legalistic energies are people that they follow the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law. Where, um, you know, even like this wasp energy that I keep doing is like, well, I'm not actually touching you. Well, I'm not actually touching you. I'm not actually touching you. It's a very bullish kind of energy with something trying to get in there, even though it's like edging, but it's not even fun. Like, you know there it's being able to transmute how you've been explaining your healing journey to others and knowing that if someone can't listen to a story or a fable they're very hurt because somebody told them a story and it was a fucking lie and it hurt them in the past they need to heal from that energy but that doesn't mean you should be held back because we're the card of the lover this is a story about your counterpart this is your story going on a twin flame journey for those of you who identify with the journey. This is you finally overcoming toxic lover energy and stop jumping into bed with people that would actually cause way more harm in your day-to-day -day life than you thought was absolutely possible. And you're being super fucking incentivized to take a hold of your own personal independence. Damn, what the fuck is going on around you? How are these other people behaving? Four of roses in the reverse and la papisse. I'm, 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 it's funny, I'm trying to, trying to do a little bit of French here. He was like, la papisse, which is the high priestess. Like, this is the energy where, um, <laughs> some of this is a little bit of suck up and also sort of like they can't help themselves like whatever energy is is being drawn back towards you whether if that's sort of like hi we haven't talked in a while we should catch up and your reaction is wow i was so glad not hearing from you do we need to really catch up or even um someone just sending you that sup text god i fucking hate the sup text like <laughs> the sup text is full of subtext womp womp and it's sort of like the cryptic i know what it is that you're looking for and i don't really want to answer that because i know that you're just going to be wanting something this is again recognizing people's intentions through their texts through their emails even in the way that they try to like act as though they're so cutely and coyly trying not to get your attention and you're just kind of sitting there going it's not that unobvious like oh you oh i didn't notice you over there it's not playing into their game where you know this shit w would be funny if you have a good relationship with someone. You just know that you are acting, but this is someone using their trauma in order to appear cute and in some ways <laughs> sucking up to you. Oh, you're such an intuitive person. Like, you know, this is someone who would like, you know, if you were a tarot reader, like they just buy a, uh, they buy a, a, a reading off of you just so they have a chance to talk to you, but they actually have no intention of listening what it is that you actually have to say say it's sort of this kind of thing and again it's not like they're being bad mean malicious they're actually just fucking desperate and confused and the fact that you don't follow with their programming confuses them even more and makes them think like they're doing something wrong again like they're not wrong but it's sort of like you're just kind of tired of telling kids the answer to the questions like if especially if you were somebody that was maybe actually decent in school and hit people like me <laughs> be like can you help me with this and after a while it's sort of like i can't keep it telling you all the answers to the questions you need to figure this out for yourself like this person that is trying to get into your energy like they're still broken in their own regard what's the spirit clarity on this <laughs> it's fate with the nature child in the reverse tendency to abuse animals, people in the environment. Whoo! So this is a little bit of that, like, I was talking about, like, I injured my hand, like, 
when I was uh, trying to, you know, take some governorship over my anger because I was very upset that my dog went to eat something out of the ground. You know, there's a piece of me that was kind of relieved when I noticed that there was worm medication randomly sitting around in my <laughs> in my medicine cabinet. So it's like, oh, well, at least that fucker has something in case he gets sick. But um, this is a, an energy where you don't even realize in the background they've done a really good job masking it but the, this is the screaming matches that go in on the background this is their their third party uh karmic this could be uh like a baby mama them having their own kids them trying to figure their own shit out when it comes to pets problems with their parents like there's a myriad of different things that this person is going through but they have a very angry depressed energy about them and there's something about you guys talking they feel like it's fate and again, they're not wrong, but because they're approaching you in such a karmic way, um, it's not even your job to navigate their karmic problem, but they're so desperate to get a hold of you. And, and many of you who've been learning how to hone your energetic boundaries, you know, when you get the subjective subtext, it's like, do I really need to reply right now? Because you are picking up on their attention-seeking energy. They are probably looking for you to be some kind of emotional binky because they just got into a fight. Always be cautious when you have the ex-lovers show up out of the blue where they start venting about the person that they are with and realizing that, yeah, they just had a fight and they seem to think that I'm going to be the one serving them as an emotional binky. And for me personally, when I've come across these energies, I'm just very matter of fact and I have to be very clear where it's sort of like, please don't confuse my rhetoric as though I'm trying to flirt with you. Like, we have nothing to actually talk about at this point. Like, however you are guided to deal with it, but this person hasn't learned their lesson and you're being asked just listen to the discomfort and how it's impacting yourself. It is not their business on how you feel. Remember, it is not their business to know how you personally feel. Your divine feminine energy is exercising its ability to, because like, you know, because I do have the high priestess, is exercising its ability to hold, like, you know, like, you know, hold, you know, hold close, like, you know, the cards, like, you know, as I cards to the chest, card to the vest, fuck it. I just say cards to the chest because I don't wear vests. You know, people are so fucking literal sometimes, but like, you know, being able to hold your cards close to yourself and just realizing like, this is my game. Like, you don't get to cheat off of me. Like, all of us are playing the same game. All of us have the same bets on the table. Like, why are you looking at my cards? Like, get your own fucking game. This is, again, you coming into your own empowerment and realizing without having to be, like, a disdainful bitch, because some of you um, are dealing with people that they would accuse you of being... You know, if you were a straight girl, like, the only reason this person would rationalize that... Uh, you don't want them. It's like, oh, they're just a lesbian. Like, it's a very mean, dismissive energy that this person subconsciously holds. And um, if you're picking it up, like, it doesn't make them a bad person. It just makes them a hurt person. You know, it's a little bit of understanding the difference between, like, someone who is just genuinely cruel versus someone who's just a hurt animal. But also knowing that just because they're a hurt animal doesn't mean you need to placate and put down your boundaries to make them feel better. So what the fuck is going on from your perspective? Five of candles and la mort. Death. Like, you're learning how to transmute a lot of twisted bullshit. You have been accustomed to holding space for people that have all kinds of different issues. Chances are because they've been hurt in a way that you can identify with. In the past, this was a trauma bond. But the more that you've been feeling better about what's going on, you're healing. And when you've gone through the karmic cycle, like you go through your thing, and then you go through the shadow aspect of it, the universe gives you a test out to see, hey, you've seen side A and you've seen side B. 
Do you understand why people behave this way? Because there was a question that you posed in the first place. Why are they like that? And the question at the very end of it is, so why are you like that? Can you even handle a question like that? Why are you like this? Why are you a type of person who has a tendency to abuse animal objects and people? Like, was it about you that drew you towards this person to understand? Because if you can answer that question and be like, okay, like, I got sick and tired of people trying to pretend I'm their mother and they kept trying to, you know, use me to soothe rather than them finding comfort for themselves because I'm so accustomed to just always taking care of myself because I didn't know how to ask for help in others. I guess that's the reason why I got into this in the first place. <sighs> And that's just a confession you can make to the universe, but the universe still needs to energetically put you through something to, to confirm, yeah, I'm actually kind of done with this. That's where we had that, um, the fool energy before I went to cut, having a fresh idea as to what home life should be for you. Because many of you are looking for someone to pair up with, looking for um, a healthy counterpart, looking for that partner in crime, that person who just gets you the most and you can just relax and, you know, be like a cat and be like liquid and just finally be able to be in a home situation where you can come home and de decompress despite who might be living in that little like shelter box with you. Along with this death, this is transformative. Some of your friendships will transform through this. Others, you're going to be jettisoning and letting go and the guilt associated with it will be lessened. <laughs> Emphasis on the word lesson. What's the spiritual guidance? Reclaim with the athlete in the reverse. Misuse of athletic ability for selfish ends. False sense of vulnerability and entitlement. This is getting out of this idea of being strong for other people, especially if you have, um, we'll call it a heteronormative situation where, um, you know, you got you got a, a dude who's actually willing to be vulnerable for once, for which I am all for masculine vulnerability. There is not a really healthy place for um, men in our society to healthfully emote what's going on, especially if there were um, abuses, like, you know, maybe even um, a little jock pride or more so being beaten up by said jocks. Um, this energy that has made us go... I need to surrender to a feminized energy to make me feel better rather than taking ownership of my own femininity, especially for any men who've been violated, hurt, harmed, and bullied um, by uh, other wounded feminine energy. When I say wounded feminine, that is the jock. <laughs> that is that bully kid. Like, it doesn't matter what their physical gender was, which actually makes this way more difficult to detect, especially when we're children and we do have genderized wounding. But this is also the idea of women getting out of the idea they need to be the strong one. They need to be... Um, the only one that they can depend on to a very toxic level where if the people around them can't be can't fall into line with the way that, you know, the self has established as a form of safety, it becomes tyrannical. It becomes dictatorial. Like, you know, there's a reason like, you know, I got a lot of the you know, dick jokes when it comes to masculinized energy. But this is misuse of vulnerability. This is using vulnerability to get sex. This is using sex to get a sense of protection. Like this can be a little bit of past life brothel energy. This is um, getting out of uh, trafficking and kidnapping energy. And whether if you have experienced it in this lifetime, most likely you have experienced it in a past lifetime. North America is going through a nasty wound of abuse, hidden abuse, kidnapping, control, 
ownership and not even of people, but the idea of owning land. Their wars are started because of people feeling entitled to land and getting out of this idea of what ownership is supposed to be. Toxic masculine energy says, the ground that I stand on, I own it and I will defend it to the ends of the earth and I'll even come up with a fucking piece of paper to say that I own it. We need to get out of this idea of what ownership truly is. And this is a bit of this post-colonial societal wound that we've all been subconsciously trying to understand and trying to heal. We've surrendered our power to anger. We've surrendered our power to toxic leaders that we thought they had it all, but only to recognize they are equally as wounded as us and equally as incapable of fixing the problem. <laughs> what kind of guidance would spirit have for you at this time? <laughs> the devil with the la diable? Like, we got a double, double sandwich here. Like, you, 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 you mind your, uh, your thoughts there. The church lady called and said... Uh, do I hear Satan? Like, there's some uh, religious judgment that many of you guys are still trying to work through. There are gendered biases that you're still trying to understand. Sexual attraction. Why are you sexually attracted to anybody in the first place? Like, why? Like, if you go into the LGBTQ community within the, the San Francisco Bay Area, like, you got the progressive flag and you have, like, you know, I think like eight, nine, ten letters that you can associate with in terms of what's your sexual identity and how do I find um, sexual attraction? Because, you know, you'll he hear things like, oh, no, I'm demisexual, which means I'm only sexually attracted to people that I have an emotional connection with. There are others, they say they are asexual, known as ace, where they just don't you know, they don't experience sexual attraction at all. But, you know, my favorite one, and I'm going to throw some people under the bus, probably polysexual, which means I'm a sexually attracted to everyone. But <laughs> I've come across many straight men who call themselves polysexual just because they want to have the appearance as though they are open to every variety and gender configuration. But really, all they're trying to do is placate to the other women out there. Um, there's some... It's not specific to everyone like that, but that's the example that I'm being shown. Why are you sexually attracted to anybody? What is the metric? For some people, it's based purely on physicality. For others, they look for, oh, what's their education like? Others, it's, well, what kind of a soul resonance do I have with this person? For other people, it's like, you know, I know people who are asexual and they still have sex. They just find other metrics of attraction that have nothing to do with sexuality. This is you having a very important conversation with yourself as to why you are motivated to engage with certain behaviors. This could be about your sense of feeling safe, making sure that you have enough money in order to be able to pay the bills. Some people who get into polyamory, it's purely for a financial reason. They want to stay in the Bay Area for one reason or the other. The Bay Area is fucking expensive. So rather than moving someplace else, because everywhere else is dangerous based on their own perception, because they're around people who also behave this way, that they'd rather shack up in the same home with three or four or five adults just to pay the fucking bills. First of all, it creates stress in the Bay Area because it's actually creating the precedent that things need to say stay expensive. It creates a sense of artificial safety because they seem to think that if I have three, four, or five people in the same home, I'm financially secure, for which you're not, especially when you have two or three people who have such a problem with keeping a, a job. Um, it causes strain within the family household, and then more codependency becomes an issue. Like, Heck, like I've been divining because I have tried the polyamory life and my only conclusion I've been able to draw from it is that polyamory will become the new way of dealing with the housing crisis. But there's a future where being monogamous is going to be a high class society norm where, oh, good for you. I have to have three wives. In this case, it's not even fun. It's like three nagging wives. And I'm being a little bit mean right now, but I'm trying to paint a specific picture where it's becoming norm that you bitch about like you know one partner to the next partner you never actually deal with the problem and then 
you know, they become angry, jealous, and bitter when they see people who are monogamous, who actually are doing okay. It's a difference of understanding an independent mindset, taking ownership of materials, ownership of emotions, and ownership of their own past, as opposed to being in a crowd of people in the same home, in the same community, in the same, you know, spiritual circle, where they resent people who are healthy, you got to ask yourself, the people you've been around, have you been resenting people who are healthy? Ask yourself first, what is health? But what's wrong with you? That's that's the energy that you're being asked to have a look at because some of you are at the risk of remagnetizing another karmic loop by screaming what's wrong with you. You're being asked to transmute this. For those of you who are healing and you know who you are, turning around the question to say, how can I help you? Can I help you? Do you want help from me? And this is you offering a consent as opposed to um, being so angry that the universe match makes you match makes these people with you to help you understand a lesson. I hope that makes sense. But what is a spiritual? <laughs> we got more fucking boundaries and another card uh, that has to do with children, the child eternal which says the inability to grow up and be responsible cough the extreme dependency on others for physical security like this was a little bit of my polyamory rant and again this doesn't have to do with polyamory this has just been my journey that i have been on to understand because i used to be very anti-lgtbq like i mean really anti-lgtbq um you know marrying and divorcing a closeted gay man was definitely some heavy karma but i asked for it because there is a piece that said, what's wrong with you? First of all, I assumed there was something wrong with somebody. So that said a lot about me, me having to go through an entire cycle to realize what was wrong with me in the first place. And really, at the end of the day, I just wanted to honor God. And I had a very distorted idea as to what God actually meant. This is you being able to come back around, learn the lesson, recognize when other people have their biases, their prejudices, and it doesn't even matter on what side of the radical spectrum they're on. We all know that radicalism is a fucking horseshoe. You've been up here screaming at other people from the other side of the horseshoe wondering why they just don't fucking get it as opposed to, you know, being able to finally get a little bit more moderate, not in your opinion, but moderate in your understanding where you can sit at the base of the horseshoe and it's like, yeah, I remember what it was like to be there. Yeah, I kind of realize why they see it that way. And just being able to hold space for people because you know that if you try to create peace, to force peace onto people, first of all, they're screaming at each other from across a big, huge chasm. They can't talk to each other. They don't even know what each other feels like. They're not interested in understanding the opposite perspective. So if they're not willing to be interested in understanding an opposite perspective. You don't need to engage with that anymore. You know what it's like to be on both sides. And the lesson from all of it is to recognize that some things never change. Like, you know, in a lot of ways, too, some of these boundaries that you're learning, like, it has nothing to do with the, the humans you've been interacting with. In many ways, I, I did manifest dogs into my life. Mostly because I didn't want to take it out on children. <laughs> There's a lot of lessons that I even wanted to understand when it came to children, child development, when it came to being anger or having anger, depression, anxiety. Like in a lot of ways, my dogs have been very useful to help me understand an aspect of myself. You know, they're emotional support pets, not to support me emotionally when I feel bad. That's a service pet. They're trained to detect when you are not feeling well. Emotional support pets are nothing more than a reflection of your own personality. So if you want to get angry at your pets, just remember, you're just technically getting angry at yourself. You know, that's a hard pill even for me to swallow, but also just recognize recognizing that you have manifested certain things into your life because you do want to have a compassionate perspective. You really do want to fucking grow as a human being and you want to be that person you always wish that you could be. <sighs> as you are able to start understanding the mechanism of what attracts you to people in the first place, what repels you from certain personalities, what sort of, you know, 
anger and frustration has led you down some dark corridors to understand the shadow aspect of people's biases and finally able to create healthy boundaries where you can acknowledge behavior, but it doesn't mean that you need to engage with it. How are you going to feel at the end of all of this? We do have justice in the eight of pentacles. God damn. Like, you know, just, just keep going at it. Just have fun. Like, a lot of this work is just on autopilot. This is actually meant to be a little bit, you know, easygoing to some degree. There's a joke in here because it is very specifically the erotic tarot. Enjoy the journey for what it is worth. Like you're learning a lot. You're learning a lot about yourself. You're learning a lot about your shadow aspect of yourself because we do have this eight of pentacles. This is the card of the apprentice. Now, like, you know, there there is a version of me that, um, you know, I was a very, uh, very um, disciplined as, when I was younger, when it came to my sexuality. And it led me down a path where I couldn't say no to people. So I didn't want to say yes. And I kind of put myself into a self sheltered um, situation. My counterpart went the exact opposite way when it came to him understanding how his sexuality was supposed to be drawn in and what his personal sense of self-worth was supposed to be like and going to the extreme for me going to play parties to understand sexuality outside of my initial biases i've still come back around pun semi-intended to my original conclusion as to why i wanted to go about my own sexuality in my own way and there's something to be said about don't be upset if you went on a journey that you were worried that you would go on. Like, you know, there is a joke that when I was a, a young adult, my church group uh, uh, jokingly nominated me to be the most likely to start the sex revolution in the 60s. So there's something to be said about people kind of just knew who you were, you know, and whether they thought it was good or bad, it didn't matter. It's interesting when you look back on your life and you realize people kind of knew something about you that you weren't quite ready to admit in the first place. And there's something playful. You had to go through something and you know it wasn't completely you, but you needed to understand something. For some of you, you needed to go through it in order to first find your counterpart in the first place and actually leave the breadcrumbs behind so that they could finally get themselves out of some shitty situations. I've seen this picture before and just because you see people like this doesn't mean they're actually happy and this is learning the difference between putting on a show and actually fucking enjoying yourself. It's a spiritual clarifier on that. Because we got nature with the saboteur. Like again, I keep getting this card and those of you who know this tarot deck or this oracle deck, you know there are tons of personalities in here and we keep getting the sabotager induces self-destructive behavior or the desire to undermine others and understanding what is it about your own nature that self-sabotaged good things a piece of you thought that you weren't worthy of something good i saw 52 52 just now many of you thought that your own very nature was criminal. There's actually some guilt that can happen with uh, straight people when they are interacting with these sex positive groups, where it's sort of like, no, I, I, I desire this gender in this configuration. And there can be a low key guilt in feeling comfortable in what it is you actually want. I know that's a very subtle, distinct energy, but considering that this is a more um, sexualized forward, romantic lover type, uh, relationship dynamic it seems it seems important to mention it's okay to be straight holy fuck it's okay to not like your own gender it's also okay to be fucking gay it's totally okay to like your own gender it's okay to want it all and it's okay to just have none of it you're just being asked to be your fucking self be your own natural self not the uh, version of that you were taught was natural, which, you know, some people have been hurt by those words. A lot of other countries are now being broached with the subject as for homosexuality. They're being broached with the subject of um, alternative lifestyles. It is very fascinating to listen to world leaders um, trying to 
um, establish, no, this is the way that our country finds its sense of morality. And I will say some of it is only to be anti-American. So there's some kind of weird energy that I'm even noticing on a global level where it's like, I don't want to be like them. Because don't get me wrong, like, you know, I like living in America. Being here has taught me some very valuable lessons about myself. But there's also the sentiment, because I'm Canadian as well. I'm fine as long as I'm not like them. Whoever they are supposed to be, again, this is breaking out of tribalism, factionalism, thinking that um, if they don't act, behave, look, love, like me, that they must be the enemy. And that's not the case whatsoever. So I'm being guided to the, the sacred rebel oracle. And let's get just one final message from, you know, some, some badass lady energy, you know, whether that is you healing your idea of what being a badass lady is supposed to be or, you know, feeling comfortable, even if you do gender identify as a dude, you know, yeah. taking in a little bit of your own seductiveness, your own little Jessica Rabbit, if you will, like feeling okay with having a dualistic nature that, you know, you can just be yourself at all times. And if you're so comfortable with who you are, no one else can be a fucking threat. I love it. I'm going to read from the guidebook because this is a pretty rich Oracle deck, but I do have the base listening for truth, which is the number 36. Awesome. I love it when it goes to the actual page. Truth speaks to us constantly, but not always in words. It may communicate through a feeling that is hard to put into words, but brings an inexplic inexplicable sense of peace, trust, and the knowledge that somehow everything is going to work out perfectly, even if there is little evidence of how it's all going to happen. You're being asked to listen for the truths beneath the words rather than the superficial message of the words themselves. This is especially true for the communications of those around you, the press, the newspaper, the mass media, even your text messages. You will begin to hear the fear in the words and the actions of those around you, even as they preach love. Listen deeper. Listen for the truth. The more in touch you are with your inner truth, with your divine guidance, with your own feminized energy, you're just going to notice how everybody else really has been scared, how everybody else have been behaving a very specific way just to feel protected. But this is a very compassionate and comforting energy. And I will note down here, we do have my little unofficial god of this collective, Guan Yin, a god who is the god of justice, but when the world needs him, he reincarnates as a woman and becomes the goddess of mercy. There's something about you finally finding the power in your feminized energies and honing that power thoughtfully and with great magnitude and meekness, meekness meaning power under control with your masculinized energy. You guys are coming into inner union, whether if the physical counterpart of whoever the fuck they are doesn't re-enter your life, having a semblance of calm, knowing that you figured it out. And it means if you figured it out, it means they figure it out. The rest of this is just us coming into our own energies listening to how people are truly feeling, not making it our business, just knowing that as we heal, we come up with healing modalities. And for those who will be able to benefit from them, they will find us at the right place at the right time. And they will be willing to listen to the rules, the boundaries and the path that you have forged because you will actually be healed and they will actually be interested in knowing how it is you got to this point. I'm just saying, whew. well, whoever you are, damn, I really hope that this helped. Thanks again, my lovely collective for sticking around. If you like my style, you are more than welcome to like, share. And if you're kind of curious what the next few messages are going to be, I highly recommend subscribing. And until I see you guys at the next one, take care of yourselves. Bye.